I'm going to answer our three questions with examples from a class I teach called Radical Vocational Discernment. This class has two primary lines of inquiry. The first is we look at historic figures who have been change agents. And the second is we consider critically dominant notions of the individual as they exist in Northern American and North, in Western European contexts. Our first question, how do you structure the classroom space to allow for the flourishing of your students as whole persons? First and foremost, I strive to create a culture that is centered on care personalis. I also include some smatterings of first and fourth week discussions and experiences, but I don't use the language of the spiritual exercises because they just fall outside the context of this class. But you will see some of them in the presence in, in my presentation today. One of the ways that I try to create this context or culture is by sharing myself and my journey. I do this in boundary ways, but I share my stumbles and my struggles and my trips and my falls. I share these because these are so often the places where we find our gifts and they are the birthplace of our flourishing. I also share my doubts, my personal doubts, my historic doubts, my current doubts, my doubts about my journey, my doubts about our future. I share these because we tend to see our doubts as antithetical to human flourishing or to our hope-filled future. And I want to break that notion of these being mutually exclusive. I strive to humanize myself and create a classroom where vulnerability is modeled and welcomed and there's an emphasis on relationality. Similarly, I want to demystify and humanize these historic figures that we look at. Most semesters, we look at Malcolm X, Dorothy Day, and Che Guevara. And when these icons exist out there as larger than life, I believe they can often unmotivate students in terms of looking for their own flourishing and places of action to create a more just world. So we look at their shortcomings and we look at their need for resilience and sources of resilience. Most importantly, however, is I challenge students not to see these as individuals who created change, but to see these as people who worked in relational and communal contexts as well as important historical contexts in order to create the change that they did. Lastly, in terms of creating this culture of cure person analysis, I actively and intentionally give voice to marginal or unpopular views that exist in the classroom or around our campus. So often our students hold these views within themselves unspoken and there is this, there is this othering that happens within them or people know that others among them in the classroom or community hold these views and we other them. So in order to invite wholeness and flourishing, I give voice to these views. Our second question, how do you help students connect what they are learning in the classroom with discernment about the persons they wish to become? My primary way is that I incorporate reflective journaling exercises throughout. I use a book, a small book by Joan Chittister called Becoming Fully Human. This is a rich book for journaling pulling from all religious traditions and including some wonderful Jesuit values as well. I also have students complete three imaginative contem contemplation exercises, one after each of our historic figures. I have them go back over the text, find a scene that really calls to them, complete this contemplative practice, and then journal about it in the first person as if they were there. Lastly, I have students complete what I call a sense of self project. This is a creative endeavor where they look back over their personal journey, identify a prominent experience, and I want them to revisit that experience, but not from their own worldview, but from someone else who was either there or accompanied them in the aftermath. They then turn this into a creative project where they are using someone else's lens and understanding to consider their own journey. Lastly, how do you see yourself as a teacher accompanying young people in the co-creation of a hope-filled future? Initially, I wanted to call this class, It's Not About You, but I was afraid no one would register for it. So often when we believe that we are solely responsible for our journey and for the possibilities of creating change, we feel burdened and we feel incapable. What I try to do is decenter the self and have students understand themselves as relational and communal and contextualized in history. I hope that this unburdens them and allows them to experience their own flourishing. 
I have them complete an interview project where they meet with someone who is creating change in a field of interest for them. They meet this person as a human. They encounter their journey. They find out what motivates them, what keeps them going, and what helps them create a hope-filled future. I hope that my reflections contribute to your own course considerations, and I welcome any inquiries that you have. Take care.